Hi, I'm Oliver Hussein. I'm a filmmaker from Toronto. Uh, I'm here at Forum Expanded exhibition with my installation Isla Santa Maria 3D. Uh, it's a stereoscopic, time-traveling, queer science fiction space opera. And it's based on the myth of the Santa Maria, of a replica of the Santa Maria, Columbus's ship that uh, formed an island. And um, yeah, the show is up until the 20th at the Akademie der Künste Hanseatenweg. Dear representatives of your planets, as you all know from personal experiences, these are bad times. Your worlds are in crisis. I must warn you, however, what has seemed an epic journey so far was only the prequel to a sprawling multi-part narrative. Welcome Oliver Hussein. Thank you. Director of Isla Santa Maria 3D. You are part of the exhibition from Forum Expanded this year. How did you come to Berlin? Did you get invited by Forum Expanded? Or? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, uh, although it's an exhibition, it works the same way. Like, uh, I submit something and then uh, there's a committee that selects it. So it's kind of similar to the other programs in the festival, only that it's an exhibition. So I had to ship stuff, uh, <laughs> other stuff than just the video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, when did you start to work on this project? Uh, about three years ago, and uh, we filmed it uh, two years ago. And then uh, it took me one year or a bit over a year to uh, work on the post-production. I did the video post-production myself, and I had to. It was my first time doing 3D, <laughs> and uh, it, that was a much more a, a much steeper learning curve than I and had expected, so I had to learn a lot, like uh, teach myself through tutorials, like the softwares and the encounter a lot of problems. Yeah. So you didn't aim for this exhibition, it was just like the process of like... Yeah, it was first shown post in... Post-production. Yeah, it was first shown in, in Toronto uh, last year, and this is the first international, um, yeah, international showing. Okay. So how did the audience react on the project in Canada. Um, in, and Toronto, what was the, in Toronto, sorry, yeah. And what was the circumstances it was screened in? Was it a film festival or was it like an art installation? Uh, yeah, too? it was an art installation. It was a gallery installation uh, uh, in a small artist-run center in, in mm -hmm. Toronto. And so it was only this work oh. was, in, was there. So it, it's like a one-room place. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the... So this film was really a collaboration with a lot of my friends, or with my groups of friends. So there, a lot of them are on camera or behind the camera. Um, uh, so uh, as you can imagine, that was also the audience, like for the for the opening a little bit. So it was very, uh, yeah, it was a very. Um, uh, it m makes a lot of sense for this film uh, that the people who were sitting there watching it with the 3D glasses were also on screen, <laughs> because that's a little bit what the what the installation does. So the installation is a uh, is an auditorium, right? There's like a so I built, we we built these benches for mm -hmm. the for, and there's a little stage and then there's the the screen and. Uh, there are kind of uh, puppets or um, glass holders for the 3D glasses that uh, that look like noses, mm -hmm. like human noses, and so the glasses kind of sit there already when when people enter. And uh, if you're a gallery visitor, uh, maybe you're by yourself or you're not like you know there's never there's hardly any, ever a full audience for a gallery. So I thought about this problem. Uh, that you're kind of alone in a space looking at this thing that was supposed to be a 3D film, you know, like 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 a, a blockbuster. Uh, so I wanted this feeling of being amongst others to look at it. So that's why there's this kind of shadow audience around you of the okay. of the glasses and the noses looking at the screen. Why? while there's also people on screen that look back at you. I was yeah. sitting in the back when I saw the uh, yeah. film yesterday. Mm -hmm. 
and I was like a bit irritated because like I had like this yeah I had like other people that was they were watching the film like in front of me but now I understand that yeah but that's also in when I go to the cinema and see a 3d film that's kind of my favorite moment is when the credit sequence starts and there's a suddenly the space is kind of mixed so you so you still have the you're wearing your 3d glasses and you're still you know immersed in that space <laughs> of the screen or the or that perspective that you're looking at then but then you also s suddenly see the seats or people getting up and there's this mix of two spaces suddenly coming together and i find that uh yeah the, the best part right like that's <laughs> when you start yeah this confusing overlap of of perspective so it's a good moment to ask you about like 3d projection so why did you want to make a film in 3D, what was so uh, interesting you about this technique? Uh, well, one reason is that I enjoy watching it uh, in the cinema. I enjoy watching these kind of films, and uh, uh, I realized that a lot of people don't. Like a lot of people find it uh, nauseating, or often people say it's like something that is actually not needed, which I find kind of absurd, right? Like <laughs> often when you read a review, people say like, yeah, but the 3D wasn't really needed. And it's like, yeah, yeah but you know, it's but like saying the like, idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I'm, I, I, I always want, I was drawn to it because I enjoy it. And then uh, the other reason was that uh, so a lot of my, my film, my previous work is interested in this idea of the screen as a window or the screen as a stage or the screen as a, another kind of reality that we're looking into and how that relates to the auditorium of the cinema itself. So for example, I did a, a, a series of projects that were playing with this idea of the auditorium, where the auditorium suddenly was like the main main space. Okay. One was shown here in, in Berlin uh, as part of the Jack Smith Festival. Mm -hmm. And we had like two drag performers holding a screen that uh, where the film was projected. And uh, by the end of it, they started to kind of climb with the screen over the in their heels over the over the rows of the auditorium. And it was quite heavy, so people had to like help them or like kind of protect themselves. So yeah, this 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 idea of you know of making the auditorium itself this space. and that space collide with the cinema uh, with the with the screen space. I mean. Uh, that was something I had already done previously, and I think that's why, like, 3D was kind of a perfect medium for that. How would you situate your message and your approach and larger spectrum and framework of power structures? I mean, you you were speaking about like these different rooms of like the screen and the auditorium. So mm -hmm. I think it's quite interesting when you just like break this like two separate rooms usually or like in general but mm -hmm. so in this one i think the uh, i wanted to play with the to make it like to make it clear that the uh, with these noses or the puppets that are sitting there mm -hmm. and they're quite stiff right like, like because they're just on sticks and so it's a little bit like they're making fun of the audience as well, right? Like the, the, it's like a caricature of, the, of an audience that's kind of sitting there stiffly. A consumer. A consumer. But for 3D cinema, you actually have to. 3D cinema needs a immobile viewer, right? It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not a very democratic art form in that way. <laughs> it is like you have to be very. You have to like fixate onto the screen. And one thing that I learned is that uh, there's only actually only one seat or one. Uh, Space in the in the cinema where you or in the, yeah in the cinema when you're watching a 3D film that gives you an undistorted view. So all the all all of us in the normal seats uh, we, we we see a slightly distorted perspective. So there's only one kind of uh, correct seat which would be kind of uh, maybe flying above the audience closer to where the projector is. And so uh, so I thought about this kind of royal perspective, you know, mm -hmm. in a theater and uh, and about the camera and, and viewing. So, so I felt like these ideas of perspective and power uh, are already at play in 3D. And that's why I, I chose a, um, a narration that also connects um, imperialism or the history of imperialism and the history of explorers and looking at the world through uh, with the imperial gaze yeah to connect that with 3d film and with the technology of that I'm using 
Um, so the so the narration of the film and the and the dance sequences uh, with the dancing conquistador and his uh, binoculars, uh, they kind of play with these ideas and these connections. Yeah. So you just like uh, said like that you were like reframing the history, especially like about like the Isla Santa Maria and like Christopher Columbus mm -hmm. going to the so-called New World, but you also facing the future. It's like yeah, so it's a time traveling. Yeah. So narrative. what was this idea behind it? Like, so why did you just like not only think about like the past and how we from a Western um, point of view look on other worlds, like different worlds, like yeah, as I, I imperators, thought... but also like into future where like it's uncertain what's going to happen. So and yeah. Uh, so one reason was that, like I said, my reference point was not so much for this one was not so much, you know, art cinema or how artists have worked with 3D cinema, but really blockbuster cinema or popcorn cinema. And uh, uh, and so the form of a science fiction felt like a, the right thing to choose, right? Like that's uh, that's often what those kind of narratives do. And then um, uh, my starting point was really the this story of the Santa Maria, the replica of the Santa mm -hmm. Maria that was built 400 years after the first real Santa Maria. So I thought about also oh, there's already this kind of gap of 400 years and why not add another 400 years? Uh, and then so the film takes place in 1492, 1893 and uh, 2294, right? Like that's kind of the, uh, the, the 400 year jumps that are kind of conflated in the film. And um, yeah, that's the answer to that. Yeah. You mentioned in the beginning that like a lot of your friends were behind the camera, behind the scenes or like acting for mm -hmm, your mm -hmm. project. Yeah. So how important was this like kind of family that you just like were working with for you and this project in special? Oh, that's a great question. So the, uh, uh, yeah, it was really important. So I actually really kind of very consciously included my different scenes in the <laughs> film. Uh, so for example, in the, in the, a future part. Mm -hmm. There's a. Uh, they are the representatives of their planets, and so uh, all of them are ela very elaborately costumed, and they represent their own, yeah, whatever they want their planet was. And uh, so, so you I, so gave they, them total freedom. I gave them total freedom, and they really created those costumes and those uh, those outfits themselves. Wow. Uh, but I knew that they could. I knew that they, you know because I know them, and I know that they uh, would enjoy this, right? Uh, uh, so this was one. Uh, so one group of them is. Um, uh, so ever since me and my partner have been living in Toronto, we've been throwing a party that's been kind of continuously growing. It's a drag party called Hot Nuts uh, in Toronto, <laughs> and uh, and it's actually one of the reasons why we're still there. We've kind of found our our kind of people with with that with that party and. Uh, uh, there are a lot of other people involved in it now as well. So, so that's kind of one uh, one group there. And then the other one is the uh, is SAVAC, the South Asian Visual Arts Center. Mm -hmm. It's another of my group. So my, my background is uh, my family is from India. And I, uh, one reason oh. why Toronto is great for me because it has a huge diaspora from uh, South Asia, meaning the uh, Indian subcontinent. And so, uh, uh, yeah, so those... Uh, yeah, those people are in there as well. So it's like this. Uh, yeah, it feels really like a uh, yeah like a family meeting in a, in a way. And uh, for this one, because the film talks about it, uh, yeah, one thing that it does talk about is uh, how the how these. Um, how kind of the colonial colonial curse that we can still deal with in our life, how that could be, you know, in the future be uh, surpassed, how there could be some sort of other, uh, like an utopian idea, uh, uh, imaginable. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to have this. Uh, I didn't want to, you know, show an utopia, but I, I wanted to have this feeling of community somewhere in the in the visuals or ha have that. Uh, uh, have that kind of ideal 
um, demographic uh, of diversity and queerness, you know, in the in the uh, yeah in these groups that you see in the in the film, but already the, realized kind mm. of yeah. even in the scenes from 1893, yeah, they're very. Uh, uh, the cast, like with a very multicultural um, uh, crew of people, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, there's a drag queen, you know. So it's, it has this kind of, um, for me, it has this kind of utopian moment uh, already there in the past. This is what you can clearly see as a viewer if you just like, especially mm -hmm. like this scene, what you just like mentioned, like in 1893, mm -hmm. that it's like a white, pretty colorful and like pretty mixed and like not. Mm -hmm. It's like not only like straight white men, like no, it's like you're querying the screen, definitely. Yes, yes, yeah. So I think it has, has been a lot of fun to, to shoot this movie, right? I mean, with a lot yes, of your friends. Absolutely. And yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so like I said, it was really this process of collaboration. It was not, uh, um, and it was quite open. The, uh, yeah, it was it was fun to shoot this. Yeah. And what's interesting as well that you just like I mean the La Isla Santa Maria went like from Europe or like sailed to Europe from Europe to um, mm -hmm. to America. Mm. But your family history relates to that as well. What you just like mentioned. So you have right, like yeah. family. Was this like important for you too? Yeah. To just like uh, I think yes for sure. Like the, that I'm like not only in this film but in a lot of my my previous work the narrations about migration and those kind of storylines are yeah are very often the basis or a starting point for me for sure in that way yeah so what is we, that what you're what yeah you're yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so what do you think like what is your vision for your very own personal future and like for my future too like I mean I'm including myself like <laughs> because like you said like you're thinking in like kind of friends and family family structures so what you wish or dream for the future and for the world oh <laughs> um, um, I don't know I don't I, uh, this is a beautiful idea and a beautiful vision. You know, the the, uh, uh, the other kind of utopian image that the film also creates is the is that the remains of the Santa Maria, so the the ship model, the replica mm -hmm. actually deteriorated after the after the World Fair. It kind of fell apart into um, a pile of dirt, uh, <laughs> and and so the that is the actual Isla Santa Maria is this pile of dirt. This what I didn't is, understand, uh, but there's oh, okay. like really like. It's a, it's well, that's the that's a the, the myth. myth. Yeah, that's okay. a myth. So, so uh, uh, it's something that I found online, and that story actually started my whole started this whole project. That the that the that the replica mm. of I the see. of the okay. Santa Maria, which you know is so symbolic for Thanks. all the all these dark histories, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and so that that uh, uh, fell apart, and then something you know something grew like a. Uh, a, a, a new island is, of course, an image of, of hope well, or of well, life. Island. Yeah, of new Starts life. Starts yeah. again. So, uh, but it's also a ridiculous image, right? So it's, it's also <laughs> a, 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 a ridiculous uh, pile of mud that, that <laughs> then in the film gets elevated to this utopian standpoint. So yeah, so I uh, I don't only have a uh, yeah, I have this kind of rosy vision, but also a more uh, yeah, a more complicated vision about the future, like that. Uh, one uh, one source for me was uh, 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 a very uh, like I think a lot of people who read queer theory love the book by Jose Munoz about queer utopias, mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah, that was one, another starting point for for me. And he uh, he thinks about this idea of queerness itself as, some, as something that is utopian, that you know queerness is only something that we can kind of strive for or that is not realized yet, and that is an ideal that uh, that is worth fighting for. Yeah, so that is maybe something another answer to this. Is this what you drive? as an artist like I mean like maybe feeling exclusion or like I mean Canada is like quite very open like in LGBT rights mm -hmm. uh, 
<laughs> very wow. different to many other places in the world. That's true, yeah. So, I mean, by this it's like quite an utopian place for you to live, I think. But sure, yeah. um, I mean, now that I've been there for a long time, over, over 10 years now, mm -hmm. I also see the where that, you know, where that dream has its cracks or where it's not, you know, where it's not that, or also the, the diversity of it or the, uh, you know, the, the, the openness that is, in, especially now, is again, uh, once more, you know, very, very, being made very public. Mm -hmm. I see where the problems with that are. But yeah, f you're right, for me, especially, uh, uh, coming from Germany, especially that kind of context of diversity or the or the discourses around migration uh, that were that I found there that were at this very different level than they are here or they seem they seem to be at least uh, that yeah that was definitely something that attracted me there and that's still something that uh, makes me feel at home there. Yeah. But do you feel still uh, feel still at home in Berlin too? I mean, you have I've lived here for several years. You never in felt Berlin, No, in Berlin I've never lived, actually. Oh, I'm I sorry. lived in, in Frankfurt. And Frankfurt, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My brother was here, but I never lived here. It was kind of like either I moved to Berlin or to Toronto, and then it was Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oliver, thank you so much for this interview. Oh, you're very welcome. Right.